Good morning and happy Sunday to you. I want to take this time before I even go further to wish a happy Mother's Day to all those mothers who are listening to us this morning uh, and to all those people who have taken the mother uh, role in their lives. Uh, God bless you as you take on this very important role during a time that is very difficult. Thank you again for inviting us into your homes. Um, as we look together into the word of God this morning, I invite you to pray with us. Dear Lord, we thank you for waking us up today, for giving us a brand new day and a great opportunity, Lord, to make things right with you. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you are present with us even during these difficult times, Lord. And we ask you that you help us to keep looking uh, to you for guidance uh, for the very next step that we need to take each day, each moment of our lives, Lord. As we look into your word, Lord, give us understanding and help us to receive what you have for each one of us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title for this message is There is a Plan. There is a plan in, in all that is happening today, all this uh, pain, confusion, um, the fear of getting ill, dealing with those who are uh, close to us who are dealing with the COVID-19 virus and struggling with illness. We know that there is a plan and God is going to reveal that plan to us as we read uh, his words this morning. In the recent uh, months, we have faced this sobering event that everybody can relate to. Whether you live in this country or in all the many countries in the world, we have all been affected by this one major event and suddenly what we thought was normal changed. Um, what we thought was how we should interact with each other in a social setting also changed. And even the basic uh, routines of things that we, we, we are used to had to change as well. Um, we know we always respect our personal space between each other. But overnight, we had to wear a mask. Uh, we've had to wear a mask or have six feet distance between each other to be able to have even the friendliest of conversations. COVID-19 has affected everybody and changed life as we knew it. When I think about my own life uh, and I look back to the many times when there's been changes in my life, there was a time, in, a very uh, important time in my development when things changed. My life as I knew it had to change. I grew up in the church. I was raised by Christian uh, parents who taught me about God from a very early age. And even when I went to high school, my friends uh, were Christians as well. So they believed the same things that I believed. My neighbors believed the same things that I believed. My friends outside of school and outside of church, for the most part, I had been intentional about being, uh, getting around people who believed the same things that I, I believed as well. However, when it was time for me to go to college, I had to leave what I knew and the way of doing things that I'd been used to. And, and I, ventured, I ventured into a world where things were different for me. Not everybody believed in the same things that I believed in. And for the first time in my life, I did not have the influence, the Christian influence that I'd always had. I didn't have my parents to keep on reminding me about what we believed in. I didn't have my friends to encourage me to live a certain lifestyle. So when I got to college, I figured I need to live life differently now. And I decided to live my life independent of God. But do you know that as soon as I decided to do that in my life, I realized that a life that didn't have God in it in any capacity was empty and unfulfilling and that the future with a life without God in my life was very uncertain. In those moments, those very first months, I would say, of um, college years for me, I realized my desperate need for God. God is the one who gives meaning to life. He gives direction to life. He gives hope in life's journey. And I understood that those many years ago. This morning, in different capacities, we are all struggling with our lives right now. We don't know what's going to happen in the next two, three, or four months. Right now, many of us are dealing with illness and the loss of loved ones, the loss of jobs, the loss of resources. Everybody is so afraid, so afraid and the future is so unclear and uncertain. And in these moments, we all realize that we do need God in our lives. I want to encourage you this morning that God is present with us. The God who created this world, created the world with a plan, a plan for his whole creation and a plan for you and I. And even more importantly and more comforting, he wants to walk and desires rather to walk with each one of us as we go through this season of our lives. I know the hope that I've experienced, the security that I've experienced by walking with God in my life. 
and I can only encourage you to take on that road as well and start walking in that road with me. But you have to discover that plan for yourself. The word of God in uh, Psalm chapter 34 verse 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. I can tell you of my own experiences, but you would have to experience it for yourself. When we are so used to doing things a certain way and someone comes to us and tells us, you have to stop doing things this way, this way, and just trust God and take a leap of faith. It can be very unsettling and very scary. But if you feel that way, I want to assure you that you're not the only person who feels that way. The Bible is full of many men and women, ordinary people like yourself and I, who dares to trust in God, who dares to live life as they knew it and to embark on a journey with God. And one such person is a man called Abraham. We read in the book of Genesis chapter 12 uh, about what God did with Abraham's life, an ordinary man, ordinary like you and I. In verse 1 we read, The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land that I will show you. And the story goes on in verse 4, we read, So Abraham went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out for Haran. We read on that he took Lot, his nephew, obviously, and also his wife at the age of 75 years old. I try to imagine that it seems like an impossibility because at that ripe old age of 75, you've lived your life a certain way, the people that you know you've known for ages, and your family is your support. You know where your friends are, you know where all the resources that you need are, but at that age, God tells Abraham, leave everything that you know, your sense of security, and go to a place that I'm going to show you. Abraham obeyed God and left. He left what was old, what was familiar, what was comfortable, what he knew, and headed towards a future that he had no idea looked like. What, what, no idea what it looked like. Mind you, in that time as well, God had promised Abraham and his wife that they would have a child at 75 years old, with his wife beyond childbearing years. God promised them that they would, have, they would have a child. It was humanly impossible. When I think of it, when you think of it, I'm sure, it is impossible that at 75 years old, with your wife probably at the same age, beyond her childbearing years, that they would have a child. But God promised this to Abraham. And in spite of what he believed, in spite of his limited understanding, Abraham chose to believe God and to trust him and he left everything that he knew and followed God's plan. This was a very new experience for Abraham and the word of God continues to unfold his story throughout Genesis, even towards the end of the Bible. But we are told that God fulfilled his promises to Abraham. The very things that he had promised that he would do in his life, God kept those promises and fulfilled them. We are told that Abraham and his wife had a son who was later named Isaac. So Abraham and, I, and Sarah, at an old age, became the ancestors of what was to become the great nation of Israel. In the word of God, we find out too that the word of God calls Abraham the father of believers, the father of faith. In other words, this man who was at 75 years old, he had no child, no hope, was probably waiting to, to see the end of his own life was told was given the opportunity to become to trust god and to become the father of many generations of believers of believers that just goes to show you that our god is limitless and that he has a plan for each one of us and that that plan cannot be limited to what we think we know or what we see in our day-to-day -day lives the same god who walked with abraham the same god who kept promises to abraham is inviting you this morning to walk with him on this journey of life. What we see and what we think is very limited. What we know is very limited. But God wants us to experience the life-changing uh, um, presence that he can give to us. He wants us to see what uh, our eyes cannot allow us to see, but what his spirit and his power and his presence can help us to see and to experience. Right now, the human race is, is, is crying, is, is laboring right now because of what is happening with COVID-19. We are all praying that we see hope and light in the horizon. But we already have that hope. We already have that light. 
And Jesus Christ is that light. He says in John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. The one who walks with me, the one who walks in me, will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. What does that mean that he has the light of life? He is the light of life. And that's a metaphor, obviously. Jesus Christ is the source of all our needs, our spiritual needs, our emotional needs, whatever it is that we can need, he is the source of those things. And Jesus Christ is the one who sheds light on the direction that our lives should take. Remember, he was in the beginning, the creator who knows why he created us, why he created the world in how we are supposed to live our life. So he brings light and his very presence to walk with us, even in the darkest of times, brings light to our lives. God created you with a plan. He has a plan for each one of us. And now is the time to begin discovering what that plan is and what that means for you specifically. Each day that comes will bring new experiences. It goes without saying that already we are living in a new experience. And sometimes it may feel as though the, world, the whole world is struggling with the same things. But when we go through a crisis, it's very personal to each one of us. God is very concerned and intentional about each one of us. And he wants, us, he wants to help us to navigate this time of our lives. Today I come to encourage you that there is hope in Christ. He is offering that hope to you. In the book of Revelations, in chapter 3, one of my favorite verses, it says, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears me, hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me, there with me. So he's at the door of our hearts, standing and knocking. Again, another metaphor. He wants to come in. He wants to comfort us and give us life and change how we experience what we are going through right now. We know that when people are eating together, it means that they are at peace with one another. It means that there is love there. It means that there is reconciliation between those parties. So Jesus Christ is saying to you and I this morning, he wants to come in and eat with us. He wants us to enjoy the fellowship of his presence with us. He wants us to experience the love that he wants to give us. He wants us to experience peace that only he can give us at a time where it seems even impossible to think of peace and being afraid of getting sick, being afraid of losing your own life, being afraid of losing your job, your sense of security, your children, your family. He's saying to you, invite me in and I'll be able to help you to experience that peace. He is knocking at the door because he is patient. And you may ask me, what do you mean by saying knocking at the door? What it simply means is that God is always talking to us. He talks to us through the so many preachers that you hear. Through his word, he talks to us. Through a friend who can give us a message, talks to us. But even more, God speaks to us through his spirit. Even in those quiet moments, he helps us to realize that he is present with us. And he helps us to acknowledge him and to invite him into our lives. And maybe you're listening to me this morning and you're wondering about this God that so many people talk about. This God that gives them hope in a time when everything seems so desperate. Today, that God is waiting for you to just invite him into, into your life. He's waiting for you to just answer his call to give you peace, to give you hope, to give you love and understanding about what is happening today, which, is, which may be so confusing to so many people right now. And if you are that person, I, I just want to pause even in these moments to pray with you. Just say these words. Dear God, I thank you for your word. I acknowledge that you are my creator. I know that you sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross and to show me the way to you. Lord, I forsake my old way of doing things. And I want to invite you into my life so you can walk with me and give me hope. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And if you have prayed that prayer with us this morning, I want to encourage you and reassure you that you're now a part of God's family. I encourage you to find a Bible if you don't have one, or you can just uh, inbox us at this Facebook page and request a Bible, and one will be sent to you uh, at home or wherever it is you need us to send your Bible. Uh, and also, if you have any questions about what the journey with God means, please do send your, uh, your, your questions to the inbox. 
And even as we're closing, I want to speak to maybe somebody who is listening in these moments, who believes in God, has, has been working with God for many years or maybe for months, whatever that looks like for you. Maybe the recent events have been causing you to doubt or to have your, your faith shaken because you're facing illness, you have suffered loss, you have suffered the loss of loved ones or a job, or you don't know what the future is going to look like. You are battling in these moments and you're wondering, God, where are you? Or do you even care? I want to encourage you these moments, in these moments that God cares about us, but even more, he doesn't change. Who he is to us does not depend on what's happening in our lives. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, we read, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what we know about God remains the same in spite of what the situation in the world is. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28, we read, Have you not heard, have you not known, the Lord is everlasting, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint, he does not grow weary, and his understanding is unsearchable. Today, I just want to remind you that our God never changes. What he has promised to you, he's going to fulfill. We read this morning that he fulfilled his promises to Abraham, and that same God will fulfill his promises that he has made to you and to all that believe in him. So take heart and be encouraged. Please pray with me. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word that has come to us in a powerful way. We thank you for that reminder that you're a God who keeps his promises. We thank you because we know, Lord, that you created this world with a plan and that you have created a plan for each one of us and that you desire to walk with us, Lord, through the different phases and seasons of our lives, Lord. So we ask you, Lord, in these moments when the world is shaken and wondering what the future holds, that you would remind us that we have a God who loves us, a God who wants to walk with us, a God who wants us to experience hope even in dark times, Lord, and a God who's just waiting and knocking at the door for us to receive him. We pray, Lord, for those who are ill in these moments, Lord, that you would bring healing to them, Lord. We pray for those who have no resources, Father, because of COVID-19. I would ask that you would help them to look to you, Lord, and that you would provide resources for them. We pray for our children, Lord, that you would help them to continue to learn and to grow and to develop well, Lord, even in spite of uh, the difficult circumstances that we are living in. We just love you, God, and we thank you that you love us unconditionally. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for joining us, and we, ask, uh, we hope and pray that you will have a wonderful day today. May God bless you.